Welcome to your SST class. Students, in our last video session, I discussed with you about our Indian Parliament. I told you about the two houses of the Parliament, about their qualification of the members, about the composition, about the term of the house, about the presiding officer, and also I discussed some part from the powers and functions of the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha. Now, last day I discussed already about this two power that is legislative power and financial power of both the houses. Now, today I shall begin from the executive power. Now, see children, actually what happens in case of an Indian parliament, things are a bit tricky. The member of the legislature, they themselves are the members of the executive. Okay, the members of the legislature, they themselves are the members of the executive. Or in other words, you can also say that Prime Minister and his council of ministers, they themselves are the member of legislature. Okay, they themselves are the members of Lok Sabha. But on the other hand, if we talk about controlling the executive, the legislature plays a very vital role in controlling the executive. Okay, the legislature may ask questions to the executive about their policies and about their functions okay and in case the executive fails to satisfy the legislature with their answer then what happens the legislature may pass a vote of no confidence motion against the executive and if a vote of no confidence motion is passed against the executive then the prime minister along with his entire council of minister has to resign Okay, so in this way, the legislature, they control the executive. And on the other hand, I already told you that the member of the executive, that is prime minister and his council of ministers, they themselves are the members of legislature. Okay, so this we are done with the executive power of the parliament. Next, we will move on to the constitutional power of the parliament. Okay, actually, do you know children, our Indian constitution is partly rigid and partly flexible. What do you mean by partly rigid and partly flexible? Certain laws are there which can be changed very easily. Whereas certain laws are there which cannot be changed so easily. So in that case what happened? If any amendment or changes has to be done in the parliament, then in case of few laws changes are done very easily. But in maximum of the portion, if any changes are to be done in the constitution, then it has to be passed by two-third majority in both the houses of the parliament. Then only any sort of amendment could be done in the Indian constitution. Is that clear? So, we are done with the constitutional power also. Next, we will move on to the judicial power of both the houses. Now, when it comes to the judicial power of the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, both the houses enjoy certain elective power. How does they enjoy certain elective power? Both the houses, they participate in the election of the president and the vice president. Not only that, they also participate in removal of the chief justice of India, the chief justice of the high court and not only that, they also participate in removal of the president of India. So, these are the judicial power that are enjoyed by both the houses of the parliament. Okay. Now, I will move on to the next half of your chapter. Children, see, the thing is that apart from these two houses, that is Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, some other people are also involved in the parliamentary form of government. Who are those members? Last day, I guess you remember, I told you that as you have several organs in your body which performs different functions individually, Similarly, our government also has three organs. Now, the three organs of the government are the legislature, executive and the judiciary. Okay, so apart from the legislature, that is apart from these two houses of the parliament, the other members of the parliamentary form of government are the executives also. And whom does the executive comprises of? The executive comprises of the president, the prime minister and his entire council of ministers. Okay. At first, we will study in details about the Indian president. Okay. The president of India is the nominal head of our country. Or you can also say that he or she is the nominal executive. 
And not only that, the president of India is also the first citizen of our country. Okay. Now, how is the president elected? The president is elected by the electoral college. He or she is elected by the electoral college. Okay. What does the electoral college comprise of? The electoral college comprises of the members of Lok Sabha, the members of Rajya Sabha and also the members of the Vidhan Sabha or the state legislative assembly. Is that clear? Okay. And he is not directly elected by us. Okay. He is elected by the pro process of proportional representation. Okay. He is elected by the process of proportional representation through the electoral college comprising of the members of Lok Sabha, the members of Rajya Sabha and the members of state legislative assembly or the Vidhan Sabha. Okay. Now we will study about the term office office or the tenure office office. The president remains in his office for five years. After getting elected, the president remains in his office for five years. However, after five years, the president may get re-elected. Okay. So, again, he may become the president of India. But before that, before that five years, before the completion of that five years, it may happen that the office of president may fall vacant. Okay. But under certain conditions only, the office of the president may fall vacant. In case the president dies an uncertain death, then his office might fall vacant. Okay. And if he is removed, okay, for, uh, for after being found guilty of some offense, if the president is removed from his office, then also his office might fall vacant. Okay. And if the president resigns from his position, then also his place or his office might fall vacant. Okay. So, before the completion of five years, this incident may happen. Okay. But after the completion of five years, the president can get re-elected for becoming the president of India again. Okay. Now, we will move on to the removal or the process of removal of the president. The president is removed from his office by the process of impeachment. He or she is removed from his office by the process of impeachment. Okay. Impeachment is a very long process, children. It, uh, in, uh, while the impeachment is going on, a resolution has to be passed by both the houses of the parliament. Then the Supreme Court or the Chief Justice of India also gets involved into the matter. It's a long process. Several steps has to be, pa uh, has to be followed for this process. So it's a very long process by which the president is removed. He is removed by the process of impeachment. Okay. Now, what about the salary and allowances of the president? Previously, the salary of the president was around 90,000. But recently, the salary of the president has increased. Okay. It has become 150,000. Okay. And all this salary is charged from the Consolidated Fund of India. From where is it charged? It is charged from the Consolidated Fund of India. Okay. Now, we will study about the powers and functions that are enjoyed by the president till he remains in his office. Okay. At first, we will discuss about the legislative power of the president. Okay. So, after the parliament gets elected, the president, he summons the parliament twice in a year. Okay. This is the first legislative power that is enjoyed by the president. Okay, what is the second legislative power that is enjoyed by the president? He has the power to dissolve the Lok Sabha. In case of an emergency, the president has the power to dissolve the Lok Sabha. And a bill also has to go through a president before becoming an act. Okay, after, after a bill is passed by both the houses of the parliament, the bill goes to the president and it becomes an act only after the president gives his signature or accent. Now, apart from this three legislative power, another very important power that is enjoyed by the president is issuing of ordinance. Okay, what are ordinances? Ordinances are temporary laws that are passed by the president when the parliament is not in session. Okay, and this usually happens in case of national emergency. Whenever your country is at the stake of war, during that time the parliament usually gets dissolved and the president runs the country by passing or by issuing ordinances or temporary laws. And the validity of those ordinances are just six months. Okay, not more than that. Okay, now we will study about the executive power of the president. 
Now, as I told you, when I began with the president, I told you that the president is the nominal executive. He is also the head of the executive. Okay, so what is the major task or what is the major executive power of the president? The first and foremost executive task of the president is to appoint the prime minister. Okay, from among the ruling party in the Lok Sabha, the president appoints the prime minister and after consultation with the prime minister, the president also appoints his council of ministers. Okay, and the second duty of the prime minister, uh, second duty of the president is to allocate portfolios to the uh, to the council of ministers but whatever task the president does okay being an executive everything is being done by the uh, president after consulting with the prime minister of your country okay without consultation with the prime minister the president never does any work okay so these are the executive power and these are the legislative powers of the president next day in my next video i am going to discuss with you some other powers of the president and i will move on to the other part of the chapter till then have a good day